Joining me in the studio to discuss the Cuba-U.S. relationship is Carlos Gutierrez. He was the U.S. Secretary of Commerce under President George W. Bush. Secretary, thanks for joining us. This announcement by President Obama is being called historic, momentous, a landmark announcement. Um, you're opposed to it. Why? Well, I, I think it's a massive win for Cuba. It is a huge win for the Cuban regime. Uh, the spies that we released from prison, they have been, they used to be five, and they were called the Cuban heroes. Uh, and there's been a campaign in Cuba for years and years about getting back our heroes. Well, they got back their heroes. Yesterday, the celebrations in Havana were not because we're now friends with the U.S., it's because our heroes are back. I'm glad we have Alan Gross back. Essentially, this has been a prisoner exchange. Uh, everything else is yet to come, but we have made some tremendous commitments. We're going to put an embassy, we're going to take you off the terror watch list, uh, we're going to, uh, you know, recognize you formally at the, at the summit of the Americas. Uh, these are tremendous concessions, political concessions for the Cuban regime, but we haven't gotten anything back. A lot of promises, that the, but, you know, in, in, in Raul's speech yesterday, what he said is, we're not changing anything. But looking beyond the prisoner exchange, looking at the bigger picture here, I mean, the point that the president made yesterday in that announcement, he said, look, 50 years of the embargo, 50 years of isolating Cuba have not really achieved anything. It's time to change. Yeah, you know, the, the, the irony is that there are two things I would say. One is the embargo has denied the Castro's resources. And when they have had resources, what they do is they expand their military, they expand their internal... Uh, 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 security apparatus, they send troops to Africa, uh, but the Cuban people have never seen the benefits of that. So what would the Castros have been like with resources? I think that's a, a pretty alarming thought. Uh, the second thing is that it has been the Castros who have always been against lifting the embargo. They tell the world they want it lifted, but at the same time they make it impossible for us to lift it. Uh, because their ideology is anti-Americanism. You know, Marxism is almost a secondary tactic. They are anti-Americans. They are protecting Cubans from the empire. They don't want relations with the U.S. So what will most likely happen, if, if history is going to be a pattern for the future, is this thing will fall apart. The Cubans will use it as an excuse to step back. They will take all their gains and say, look, the U.S. couldn't deliver. So would you then be in favor of continuing the embargo? Yes. Oh, yes. And by the way, the embargo is a law. And inside that law, it says and it's still that, in place. that it cannot be lifted while one of the Castros are in power and until there are uh, multi-party free elections. That's in the law. So... Uh, and yes, I, I agree with that. I think Cuba's had enough of a dictator, a military communist dictatorship. Now, it's unclear how this announcement that President Obama made is going to work in practice. There is fierce opposition to it in Congress, especially from the Republican side. We know that the Republicans are very soon going to be uh, taking over both houses in Congress. Can they block it? Well, they can block a lot of, a lot of the... Uh elements of it. For example, the embassies. I mean, this is, is it's, a, it's a lot more complicated than just saying we're going to call this building an embassy now. Uh, they have to uh, confirm an ambassador. And that's a good example. You know, the, the U.S. Uh, doesn't confirm an ambassador. The Cubans send an ambassador. But then they say, look, we showed goodwill. We send an ambassador to the U.S. Your ambassador didn't get confirmed. So once again, we'll, you know, it's a justification to back away take their victories, take their gains, pocket them, and just say it was the U.S.'s fault. That has happened in the past, and they've used our system of government against us before. And they know that there's fierce opposition to something like this, and that the president may be stripped of any, any uh, of the elements that are in the agreement. What about those who make the argument that it's better to have some contact, even if it's minimal, open up in some way, that will expose Cubans to the United States and the United States to Cuba. That's always been the theory. And look, if we know that, believe me, they know that. So the, the Castros understand that, that uh, you know, we'd like to think we're sending in a Trojan horse. They, they know all this, and, they, and they've been able to manage it any time that we have had these concessions. 
they manage it in a way that it doesn't disrupt their regime, it doesn't disrupt their power, um, but they get the benefits from it. So uh, this is not as if though they're going to turn their backs and let uh, people go in and we're going to have NGOs going in and, uh, and talking democracy and human rights and uh, Cuba will remain pretty much the same. This wasn't accomplished just by the White House. They had enormous help from the Pope the Catholic Church, very influential in Latin America. What do you make of the role of the Pope? Well, I don't know exactly what role the Pope uh, had, uh, whether he wrote a note or two. Uh, I think it's also extremely convenient for Cuba to be able to say the Pope is behind this agreement. After all, they are a country that is atheist um, in their constitution. And so to have the uh, the credentials of the Pope backing up the agreement is just one more victory for Cuba. This is a tremendous diplomatic win. You are chairman of Republicans for Immigration Reform. There was a poll done very recently by the Atlantic Council, in February rather, uh, which said that 79% of Cubans living in Florida are in favor of the normalization of relations with Cuba. Are you not out of step with most Cubans well, living I, here? I've seen those numbers, and I think they're a little bit high. And, and I don't doubt that, look, I've seen some polls that suggest 53%. What I'm saying is that the reason we have the embargo is because we have an enemy of the U.S. living 90 miles away, a declared enemy, who every time a U.S. president has tried to get close, they have made that president regret it. President Clinton, President Ford. President Carter, my goodness, see, that was the Marielle boat lift, which was almost an act of war. So the question is, are they going to make President Obama regret this? Uh, is President Obama getting too close? And this has happened for 11 presidents. So uh, the big question is, is this a tactic to get some glory, to get some diplomatic recognition, to get some economic relief, because they are getting some relief out of this? Uh, at a time when Venezuela is struggling, and Venezuela today is their, you know, their, their, their sugar daddy. Um, what, uh, you know, what, what will the, the, the real true outcome be? History will suggest that, um, that there will not be meaningful change in Cuba, that these are tactical moves designed to strengthen the power of the regime. So we've looked at all these obstacles that will be in place right now, even though this announcement is being called momentous and historic. What do you see the net effect of what President Obama said yesterday will be? I think very little, actually. Uh, you know, the president will have a very good summit of the Americas. Um, he will feel comfortable. People will be applauding him at every opportunity. Uh, Raul Castro will be the man of the hour. Cuba's back. They're back in the community of nations in the hemisphere. Uh, so there is that aspect of it. But in terms of Cubans' lives on the ground in Cuba, uh, I see very little change. Secretary Gutierrez, thank you very much for joining us.